Insta360 have sent through their Link 2 for us to test out. Tech specs are now on the screen and we will come back to the design later. But let's get straight into the footage and beginning in a completely dark room with just the glow coming from our monitors. And we can be seen but do expect a lot of grain to the image. Whatever is on your screen at the time will be reflected on your face. So if you switch to something bright on your screen then this will be reflected onto you. And to be fair it does help a little with that noise in the background. With natural light coming in through the window and this brings a massive improvement so much so that my cat wants to get involved and have herself a look there is a massive reduction to the noise in the background and the movement looks as though we are getting the full 30 frames per second in the 4k mode coming closer to the lens does bring a subtle blur to the background and makes you stand out more there is overexposure down the one side of my face and if you were expecting to change this in obs unfortunately you can't manually control the exposure in there so you do rely on the insta360 controller software to be able to do this the one benefit is that you get to manually control the ISO, the shutter speed and the exposure curve to really fine tune that final image. Now if you're sitting with a window directly behind you then you can be seen but do expect the light to be really washed out that's coming in and this is not really going to be the best scenario to use this webcam but there is an option to enable the HDR mode. Now I was expecting to see a massive change in this but unfortunately it just didn't happen. The only thing I could spot is that it's slightly darkened the image with HDR enabled but it's not really helping that final image when the light is coming in behind you. If the only light that you have is your main room light, then this will give you a bit of an idea of how it would look. Obviously, it will vary depending on where your light is in your room, but for me, I've got a nice crisp image and it looks great apart from that light benching off my bald head. Now if you're using a pair of ring lights in front of you then this does look very good. Now I may be a little bit overexposed down the one side of my face but that's because the one ring light is turned up to the brightness that only the sun can replicate but we are looking crisp. If anything a little too crisp because my beard is starting to flicker. Now that's because the default sharpness on this is too high for my liking but you can drop the sharpness level in OBS and you can do it in the controller software. Now the final setting will depend on your own scenario but this did resolve that issue for me and the image quality still look great if you're trying to focus on a small object then this performs amazingly well and it is one of the best that i've tested i can move an object towards and away from the lens at various speeds and it just really doesn't matter the focus is working great and this is the same if you're trying to focus on an id card so if you need to show some details online to somebody then this is going to work great as all the details can be read easily removing a green screen in obs and once again this worked great the only reason I'm getting some pixelation down in the corner is due to my lighting position not being the best. So if you've got good lighting, you shouldn't really have an issue with this. I wanted to switch to 1080p at 60 frames per second but it never gave me the option to do this in the controller software. I did check in OBS and I couldn't do it in there either but what you need to do is enable the portrait resolution and the high frame rate option under the compatibility settings in the controller software. Once this was ticked I can toggle to 60 frames per second but it does need to reboot the webcam first. This also allows you to use it in portrait mode if you want to film things vertically for social media but you will need to get it mounted onto a tripod as the head doesn't flip on its own. Tracking can be enabled directly in the controller software. You can put your hand up in a high five position or you can tap the button on the front to enable it. The tracking performs well but it is possible for it to lose you if you do move too quickly out of the frame and it will need to see your face again in the frame for it to begin tracking again. So providing you're not moving around too swiftly then you should be okay. But this also means that if you do leave a room the tracking will stop and when you do reappear in the room providing your head is in the shot then it will re-begin tracking. Smart composition can be enabled and this allows you to select between three additional tracking methods where you can have it zoom in on your head but do expect some loss in quality here as it is using a digital zoom. You can also do a half body track as well as a full body and if you're not happy with how quick this is tracking you you do get the option to switch between the normal speed or you can make it go quicker or slower. A whopping 10 presets can be programmed into this and what this basically allows you to do is switch the position of the camera so it's pointing at something different in your room. So you could have one that's looking directly at you, have a position that looks at your cat in the background. You can do another one that focuses on the chair behind you just to make sure nobody's broke in and having a sleep on there. So this is quite impressive that you do get 10 that you can choose. 
You probably won't need that many unless you live in a mansion. We also get desk view mode. This basically tilts the head downwards to focus on your desk. So it's very good for displaying things on a live stream. Or if you do any kind of online tutoring sessions and you need to focus on some text in a textbook. As you do get good image quality and that text is readable. The only issue I have with this really is that if you bring anything closer to the lens, everything just looks stretched. So my fingers look as though they should belong to ET. Zooming in and out is possible by using the L shape hand gesture. You need to move your hand up and down to zoom in and out. Just make sure your hand is not directly in front of your face or by your shoulder. It needs to be at the side of you. Do expect a decrease in quality the further that you zoom in, but you can also zoom in and out in stages. So when you're moving your hand up to zoom in, once it begins to zoom, just move your hand away and it will stop the zoom. And do the same when you want to zoom back out. There is a whiteboard mode on here too, and there are full tracking stickers in the box, which you will need to attach to the board if you want to use the V sign gesture for it to focus on that board. Board. This takes a few seconds to detect your whiteboard, but it gives a pretty good image. The text is readable, which is the main thing that you want. Now, if you have multiple boards in the room, there is a smart whiteboard option. And what this does is that it will scan the room for the boards. And if you hover your mouse over the second board, you will get this green outline to let you know that it has been detected. If you double click on this and click on use whiteboard, this will now display the second board. So even if you don't have the tracking stickers, this smart whiteboard mode will get you up and running. If you download what's going on behind you then you can add artificial backgrounds and there's no need for a green screen to be able to do this there's seven different ones that you can choose but when you do select one do expect some loss in the frame rate with things just looking a little more juddery the one good thing is that you can add your own background or your own video as long as it's less than 20 megabytes in size you do get some weird effects when you're moving around like for example i've got web fingers here which to be fair i could probably get away with considering where i was born but if you're doing all this in 4k and things begin to struggle Struggle, then the software will alert you and you can make changes. If you don't want a background, then you can use the blur option. And the higher the intensity, the more weird looking you become, as you do get some artifacting around your head. I mean, it does blur that background out really well, but even on the lowest intensity, you do still get some flickering around your head. Now, we also get the bokeh effect. This only works in 1080p, but I much prefer this to the blurring option because it gets rid of a lot of that artifacting and you get more of a subtle blur in the background rather than it blurring completely. If you want to make your yourself look more beautiful then there is a makeup section again this will only work in the 1080p mode but you do get yourself a few options here to play around with and you can use the virtual camera option so you can bring this into other software like zoom you do get six filter options as well you don't get an intensity bar with this so you don't have the option to fine tune that image to your liking the base of this is magnetic, which the Link 2 snaps into place on. It mounts onto your screen like any other webcam, but it also has a quarter inch thread on the bottom, so it can be mounted onto a tripod if required. You can tilt the head on its magnetic base, but I found this quite a struggle to do without it falling off the screen. Maybe there's a certain knack to be able to do this, but I just haven't got the skills to pay the bills when trying to do it. It connects through the included removable USB-C cable and USB-C into your computer, and the head can be manually tilted downwards to put it into sleep mode. This is a microphone test with the voice focus mode enabled. And this is a microphone test with the voice suppression mode enabled. And this is what it is going to sound like with music balance enabled. This is a microphone test with the voice focus mode enabled with the vacuum cleaner behind us. And this is what it sounds like with the voice suppression mode enabled. And finally, this is with the music balance mode enabled.